Greetings all you slippery motion slingers. In this here tutorial I'm going to show you how to create some shiny ice using transmission and a few other new features in the brand new Arnold 5. So strap on some ice skates and let's glide away. So this is my scene, I've got the text cube on a shiny floor surrounded by some other cubes. So let's turn these cubes into ice. Starting with creating a new material. I'm using the Alt WN shortcut, which just creates a brand new empty Arnold material. And in here we're going to create the new standard surface shader. And let's also apply our new material to both the cube text and the cubes. And all that does is it adds a little bit of a specular to them, but not much else. This will be a texture based material, so I will first need to create an image node and find an image to use. And I will pick, I think, uh, how about the only image in the texture folder. And that's just a rather nice and high res image of some frost that I found on photos-public-domain.com. And it just pops up when you search for frost. So that's the one we're going to use and now that's just in our image node. Let's just try to plug that right into the beauty input and see what it looks like. It does not look very nice. But here comes the first new feature of Arnold 5, which is the triplanar mapping node. I'll create one of those and plug that in in between the image texture and beauty input. And it automatically maps on the texture from six different angles, X, Y and Z, positive and negative, kind of like a cubic projection. But the blend parameter here allows you to blend between the mappings so you don't get any visible seams. It's like a poor man's UV mapping. So now it looks a lot better than it did. But it does look a bit big, so I'm going to set the scale to 2, which will make it twice as small. Now you can probably see that it repeats the texture on every letter of our word. That's because the coordinate space is set to object, and I'm using Motext, which treats each letter as its own object. But if I set the coordinate space to world, it will spread the texture across the entire word. If you're going to do any sort of animation, you want to keep this on object space, otherwise you're going to get all sorts of sliding textures all over the place. So let's set up this texture in our shader. I'm going to start by plugging it into the base color. And that works alright for base color. But we do have some colors in that texture that we don't want. So I'm going to create the good old color correction node, which hasn't changed much. I'm just going to plug that in and bring the saturation down to zero. Then we get rid of those unwanted colors. Let's also make sure that our base weight is set all the way up to one. So our texture is just a little bit brighter. Now let's move on to the specular. I'll make sure that that is set to 1 as well. And in the new version of Arnold, this is actually where you control the index of refraction. Currently it's set to 1.52, which is that of glass. I'm going to change that to 1.31, which is closer to ice. Now let's have a little bit of fun with the roughness. I'm going to make a copy of the color correction node here and plug the image into that. And then plug that node directly into the beauty input. We're going to use this to create the roughness map for our specular. And to do that, all I need to do is just give this a little bit more contrast. So I'll set the gamma to something a bit lower, probably around 0.5. That adds more contrast, but it also makes it a little bit dark. So I'm going to turn up the exposure as well, probably around 2. And that makes it nice and bright. Then I'll plug our standard surface back into the beauty input and our freshly created roughness map into the specular roughness. And that just adds a lot more variation to our specular. Now, most ice is not completely opaque. So we want to make this a bit more transparent. And what used to be called refraction is now called transmission. So let's go into that and turn it all the way up to 1. And then we get this quite nice clear ice look with a little bit of roughness. And the roughness of the transmission is controlled by the roughness in the specular, the map we just created. And while this is nice, we don't want it completely transparent. So let's bring some of our detail back. Once again, I will create a copy of our color correct node, plug the image in, and plug the color correct right into the beauty input. Now I want my transparency map to be inverted. So whatever is bright in the base color will be more opaque, and whatever was dark in the base color will be more transparent. So I'll press the new invert button here. And that inverts it, and also makes it a bit too bright. I'll turn down the exposure to zero again. But I will bring up the gamma bit to get rid of some of that contrast. Then I'll plug the standard surface back into the beauty input. 
and my new map into transmission weight. Now we're looking pretty good here. The only thing I want to do with this now is just make that specular pop a bit extra. As if there was a layer of melting ice on top which was just really shiny. And in the new version of Arnold, there is a button specifically for that, called Coat. I'll turn that one all the way up to 1 as well, and we don't need to worry about energy conservation, because the new standard surface is energy conserving by default. Roughness, I want very low, and I'm going to change the IOR from 1.5 down to 1.33, which is the same as liquid water. And as far as materials go, that is all we need to do. But... Ice, as we all know, is transparent, and with transparent objects in Arnold, we always need to add that Arnold tag and uncheck Opaque. So I will do that right now. And that's just going to make it render correctly, which is something we want. The beauty of this ice shader and how it's using the triplanar mapping is that it pretty much works immediately on anything you throw it on. For example, you can watch me create an ice dragon in just under 10 seconds. Start out with a regular old white dragon here, and then just drag our ice material onto it. And of course, add the Arnold tag and uncheck Opaque. And just like that, he is a beautiful Mr. Ice Dragon. I hope you and all your dragons get lots of fun playing with ice in Arnold. But for now, thank you for your time, and take it easy on the ice so you don't slip and fall. But as always, stay in motion. Strong. Mm -hmm.